How would you guys describe the relationship between your characters? Trying. Troubled. Uh, mostly it's just misunderstood. You know, he doesn't, he, he thinks he understands me, and I completely do not understand him at all. So we're on two different wavelengths. We're crossing, we have no, we're not connecting on any level. And he is trying too hard, and I'm pushing away too much and trying to, you know, throw a wrench into his plan. And so we, we just are in, each, we're in each other's way, you know, and in our own way. Ego. So which of you is most like your character? <laughs> I hope he is more like his character than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm very close to this character. Uh, I'm not from the Midwest. And I'm not in a business that is being outdated, um, but I am in a very good marriage and I have a lovely child. And, you know, I, I am, we're the same age and um, I wouldn't say conservative, but I guess in some standard compared to, compared to Laird, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I was, it was easier for me to, to slip into those shoes than I think James to be that, that guy. Right on. So why do you think fathers are overly critical of who their daughters date? Once again, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think I, I don't have a daughter, but um, my guess is we know, you know, fathers know what it's like to be a young, younger man, and they know what um, younger men have on their minds, and uh, so there's no fooling them. <laughs> you know, There's they know no exactly fooling. what's going on. That's the thing. There's no fooling. And in and, and some ways you think, oh, this is payback. This is what this is. This is like, okay, now you're going to see what it's like on the other side. And you do. You do see what it's like. I went, uh, to be honest with you and, and sincere, I had never been fearful before. I got married and I, like, there was a little bit of more concern because I, I want to be protective of my wife. And once you have a child, you start having outward fears of, of inadequacy, that you can't protect your child, that you can't, I mean, I, you really do. you like, oh my, they're going out to school, they're gonna be in a car, they're gonna be, it's like, oh God, you're out of control. And men like to control things. We like to have things, you know, under our wing and everything's ship shape, you know? And, and when you have a child, that, that slips away and it's, it's a little scary. And that's what Ned is going through. His child is slipping away from him and going to another man, and it's fright it's scaring the daylights out of him. And that's why he's misbehaving like this, because he's desperate. He's absolutely desperate. And so I could relate to that. I think audiences will be able to relate to that aspect, to his aspect of wanting to find a family, to be a part of something that's meaningful. And so those are the, the foundation that we have in the movie. That's all couched because it's just it's a lot of fun. A lot of laughs. Great. So do you think there is a message about family in Why Him? Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, um, my character wants a family. He doesn't really have one. Um, he, and um, his character is, is afraid that, you know, um, and maybe he's under, you know, some misunderstandings, but um, he's afraid that his family's getting away from him, that he's becoming obsolete, and um, and I think it's really about, you know, kind of, you know, as, aside from a lot of laughs, I think it's about, you know, um, people sort of opening their eyes and coming to understand each other in a deeper way and um, getting uh, out of the way of their prejudices, you know, or getting over them. Did you know that in The Revenant, Leonardo DiCaprio, a convinced vegetarian, was so in character he ate real raw meat in a scene depicting glass surviving off a wild bison's liver? <laughs> yeah. Click here for more videos. See you soon. Bye.